Hello everyone and welcome to one of my most requested videos of all time. This video is all about my Mac Mini G4 and loads of you have been wanting to see this guy so I thought because today I'm doing something a little bit different I'd share it with you guys. Now at the moment this is running Mac OS X um, server, 10.5 server, Leopard server which is a very interesting operating system but um, I'm having some difficulties with it and it's behaving very strangely. Now it's had OS X server on it since its previous owner and I didn't have access to the serial as you guys know so huge thank you to everyone that provided me with the serial. Um, but I've had problems with sort of accounts and permissions and all that kind of thing ever since and even though playing around with OS X server is really cool I don't need it. Now one thing about this system is I'm desperate to get a standard um, standard copy of Leopard on here but I have great difficulty with my Leopard discs and my Leopard USB drives so I thought the most effective thing to do would be to clone my very stable Leopard install with pretty much no applications installed from my G5 to my Mac Mini G4 and I thought you guys would really enjoy a little bit of cloning because it's been ages since we did any on the channel obviously excluding the Hackintosh RAID 0 setup but I used to do this all the time it's the easiest way to share Leopard between PowerPC machines because a lot of them are just really fussy and this one is fussy to the point where you can't even put a CD in the drive it physically does not go in so I'm going to roll the intro and then do a little bit more explanation as to what we're going to get into So I've had the Mac Mini set up here on my desk a little bit and I've just been fiddling around with it on an actual keyboard monitor and mouse um, which is a lot easier than remote access when you want to fiddle around with loads of things. I've taken it off the server shelf as you guys may have uh, may be able to notice considering it's sitting on my desk. Um, basically at the moment I don't use the G4 for anything serious. I use my Mac Mini um, Core 2 Duo for all of the server duties. However, I've got a new piece of server hardware on the way um, I'm not going to give away too much, but I'm going to be running a very large RAID array soon and I want to have as much available memory to be uh, of use to that RAID array as possible. So I'm going to devote my Core 2 Duo Mac Mini to managing that RAID array on one external disk. Um, one external hard drive or two external hard drives I think so you know sort of six hard drives in total um, so I want to offload all of the other minor server duties that I do onto this G4 that basically does not include very much that only includes a print server um, which is obviously a very very basic setup it's just me with my USB uh, Canon printer scanner plugged into this and then enabling printer sharing and of course the other thing is uploading my YouTube videos now the RAID array is going to be busy overnight doing um, archives and backups of various machines and doing this and doing that and clones and whatnot so my Intel Mac Mini is going to be very busy so I want to upload my YouTube videos using the G4 Mac Mini if I can now I actually use the a simple web browser to upload my YouTube videos and um, so I'd have to find a web browser that would be fully compatible but I believe 10.4 Fox is fully compatible and I will be able to use it to use this as an upload server for my YouTube videos. If it becomes a massive problem then I can always upload my videos on the Intel Mac Mini. Um, I just do not want to allocate the um, importance of the RAID array uh, infrastructure to this machine because um, the, Mac, the Intel Mac Mini has fast Faster throughput, um, the system is faster in general, the memory is faster, it's DDR2 and stuff, and it supports, I believe, m more memory. I believe I can I can wangle three gigabytes into that Mac Mini if I try, um, whereas this guy is uh, limited to, I believe it's like two gig maybe, but something's telling me it might be 1.5, I'm not too sure. It's limited to something anyway, or it might even have a gigabyte in it, I can't remember. But basically, the bottom line is, I want to dedicate all of the minor tasks that I don't need to do on my Core 2 Duo Mac Mini to this one and I want to use both of these Mac Minis in tandem together. Now as you guys know this has been powered up and running on my server shelf but I haven't been using it for anything uh, that important. To tell you the truth it's been powered down for the majority of the time. Um, I have been playing around with some Linux stuff on it and I've been playing around with a couple of things in OS X server and even though I've been enjoying experimenting it's time to actually get serious and now that I've got this hardware coming for the server shelf I really really need to get my act together and get the host machines ready, um, ready and set up so that everything works 
properly. And to do that, I need an operating system that's reliable. Now, I'm not blaming Mac OS X server. I've got a massive feeling that it's the hard drive in here at fault. It makes a lot of noise, um, but that's not gonna be a big problem because very soon I'm gonna move my server setup to a cabinet, believe it or not. And this is a very exciting process. It won't be until probably around August time, maybe September time, but I just wanna tell you guys about it because there are lots of interesting server stuff. Um, on there, there's lots of interesting server things on the way. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do now is connect this to my G5 via Firewire and we're gonna use Carbon Copy Cloner to clone all of my G5 hard drive to this, excluding logic and of course my project files and stuff like that. It should only be about 15 gigabytes worth maximum. So guys, here we are set up, Mac Mini, Firewire cable, G5 all booted up and I am currently, oh it's just finished, I've just finished erasing the, you can't actually see anything, come on camera, just finished erasing the drive. So it's asked me if, it, if I want to use my Mac Mini's time machine for my G5. Uh, no thanks, let's get Carbon Copy Cloner um, up and running properly. There it is. So it's just initializing and starting to copy. This is the last free PowerPC edition of Carbon Copy Cloner. Um, when it started going paid, it didn't support PowerPC, so this is the latest I can run on here. And uh, yeah, I assume this is gonna take a while, but I've deselected everything that I didn't need, so um, it shouldn't be too bad. It should be literally just the OS and some applications. So let's wait for this to finish, and then we should have a bootable copy of Leopard on this Mac Mini. We've already ditched Mac OS X Leopard server. Well guys, as you can see, it's nearly there. Um, we've got Let's have a look, data copied, um, over 13 gigabytes and we are talking 35 minutes, so yeah, not too bad. We're coming from a SATA Revision 1 Western Digital Caviar Blue, um, you know, the, the interface is SATA Revision 1, um, so 1.5 gigabit a second and then you've, you're talking old, junky, original 60 gig, um, 10 year old hard drive. IDE hard drive on the uh, on the Mac Mini, so I'm kind of relatively impressed. Um, but then again, it's over half an hour and it's only 13 gigabytes. But you know, it's going quick enough for me. I'm pretty happy with this. It's um, it's definitely nice using this again. It's reminding me of of the stuff I used to do back in the day, which is cool. Oh, and I've actually forgotten to um, deselect Logic because Logic is just such a big install. It'd be easier to uninstall it through the Mac Mini itself, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but there are a few handy programs on this G5 that I've got, like sort of Toast and stuff, that would be handy to have. Um, actually, no, they wouldn't be, because the optical drive is junk on this thing. Um, so yeah, that was that was a complete waste of time, but whatever, I've managed to deselect most of my files and stuff, which is the important thing. Um, but what we'll do after the clone is complete is we'll go downstairs, plug this Mac Mini back into the keyboard, mouse, and monitor down there, and, uh, well, that is this monitor really, this uh, keyboard rather, blinking neck. I'm losing the plot guys. Um, and we will reconfigure the whole system and configure it for file sharing and screen sharing and printer sharing and all of that really good stuff. And then we'll slot it back into the server shelf and it can, uh, it can live there for a bit. But I can't have my printer connected to it yet unfortunately because I still need to drill a hole in the side of my desk to allow the USB cable to come out the side of the printer. Um, very, very annoying but it's gotta be done. Should have done it on my ultimate desk setup, completely forgot. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. My printer hasn't got any ink in it at the moment anyway, I need to order some. So, a little bit sluggish here, guys. Um, but it's doing okay, not too bad at all. Little chunk left to go. I'm estimating maybe like 10 minutes or something. Um, but yeah, it's really weird waiting for this. It's, it's not too bad, but could you imagine if I had a, a system full of, you know, music and pictures and you know, a couple of hundred gigs worth. I mean, it used to take ages with my PowerBook. I remember cloning my PowerBook to my iMac G4. Um, that that was crazy, because I had the full Adobe suite and had this and I had that, and it probably worked out to be about 50, 60 gigs worth. And that was a lot to clone. And I believe I cloned the lot. It was a, pretty much an exact replica. Um, but this isn't too bad. This is going okay. I'm just getting really impatient now. Really, really impatient. But it's nice to fiddle around with these older PowerPC Macs again. It's feeling very, very retro. And what's shocking about that, guys, is Leopard, um, what feels like two minutes ago for me, Leopard was the current OS, you know. 
it was the it was the OS to be running, and then you know Snow Leopard came out, and even Snow Leopard feels really old. Even Lion feels really old. Um, it's it's crazy how how retro these Leopard machines feel now. But you know, um, if you pick your tasks well, they still run certain things really really well, and no one can deny that they're very very good quality computers. And um, if you treat them right and know what you're doing, then you can get a lot out of them. You can get a lot from them. So. Yeah, I'll give you a little update when this is done. So we're very nearly there, guys, and I'm getting really impatient. I'm just so excited to start configuring up this Mac Mini um, because it's been sitting doing a whole lot of nothing and just being turned on sort of once a week on my server shelf for a very long time. Um, it did do a couple of things for me for a very short while, but my Intel Mac Mini was just better at everything. So if I can allocate certain tasks to this, I'll be very happy but one thing that's actually getting me a little bit concerned at the moment is the noise that this thing is giving off now if i just hold the camera around about here just pointing it at the floor here the stereo mic should pick up the g5 noise coming that way and the mac mini noise coming this way and if it doesn't then i'll describe it to you the g5 is actually a notch quieter than the Mac Mini because the Mac Mini has got more of a high pitched whine to it which is very interesting um, now it's surprisingly not all of it is the hard drive the hard drive is initially quieter uh, sorry quieter than I initially thought it is actually the system as well um, you know the system fan I guess it's, it's much louder than my Intel model but then again um, I've got a much newer drive in my Intel model. I've got a big 500 gigabyte that James gave me out of his um, MacBook Pro, which is cool because that internal drive is quite it's quite handy having a big internal drive, actually. Um, but yeah, nearly there, guys. Nearly there. There we have it, guys. We are done. Awesome. So 17.75 in just under an hour. Brilliant. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to quick carbon copy cloner. I'm going to select... Hang on, I can't quite do this with one hand. There we go. Select the Mac Mini, eject it, and it should eject. Just got to be patient, I guess. There we go. It's ejected. So now I can turn it off, just like that, and unplug stuff, and I'm going to carry it downstairs. We're going to plug it into the setup down there and see how far we get. I'm also going to shut down the G5 because we're done with that. So as you guys can see, the Mac Mini is back on the setup and it is booting up just fine. It's probably going to take quite a while, so we're just going to sit tight and wait, wait and see what it does. Hard drive is definitely a little louder than I would like, guys. But hopefully it'll quieten down after the first boot. So here we have it, 1.25 GHz PowerPC G4 with 1 GB of DDR SD RAM, which is the max for this machine. The hard drive is a Toshiba whatever long model number. 60 gig, well 55.89, and it does have a CD rewriter in it, but it does not work, so it's pretty useless. So that is the basic spec in the machine, everyone. Um, graphics, of course, Radeon 9232 meg, lovely, same as my G3. So I'm running Geekbench just out of curiosity, just to see what this little machine gets. It really doesn't matter, but considering I've got it on the desktop, I might as well give it a quick go and show you guys, just to add another little thing into the video, because it's very interesting. Um, I, I'm not sure what the G4 Mac Minis get at all. So guys, strangely enough, I ran the benchmarks and it went through the whole motion, but it didn't give me the little page that it should give you when it finishes, which is odd. Um, I don't quite know why that is. Open recent. Pfft. I really. I don't know. It didn't pop up with a result anyway, which is odd. But anyway, moving on, more importantly, I now have my system all set up as much as I can. Um, so if I go to system preferences, sharing. As you can see, I've got file sharing, printer sharing, remote login, and I oops, should have screen sharing enabled as well. Um, so these are all the ones that I want at the moment. Um, and the computer name is Venus. 
Um, I like naming my servers after planets. As you can see, we're fully connected to Neptune. This is my um, other Mac Mini server. So if we go into Finder here, you can see Neptune there. If we share screens with Neptune for a second, you can see that um, Venus is fully visible. Hang on one second for it to load. Okay, so here we are on Neptune. This is my Core 2 Duo Mac Mini. And if I go to Finder, you can see that down here we have Venus, nice and visible uh, already for file sharing. And I have the root of um, the root of Venus there on the desktop already. So everything is integrated nicely. And um, this is a very basic setup for now, but it's everything that I need for now. Now what I've got to do is shut this system down, um, make sure that it automatically logs in, make check a couple of the power management settings, and then I can slot it back onto the um, onto the shelf just to just to so it's in place and I can power it up and see if they both sit there comfortably together. So give me five minutes and I'll be back with you guys. So here we have the Mac Mini shelf. As you can see, G4 on the bottom with the power LED there and Core 2 Duo power LED there. Gigabit switch, router that I'm using as a router and a modem at the moment, the two Mac Mini power supplies, external drive that I'm accessing some old video clips off of for um, various reasons. That's that's going to be uh, freshly erased soon and repurposed once I archive the data off of that onto a uh, onto another drive. This is my speaker controller and this is my KVM controller. So the shelf is looking very clean and tidy. Really happy with this, but very soon it's going to get a massive upgrade and I cannot wait to show you guys. I'm so, so excited. But there it is. G4 Mac Mini slotted into place. So finishing off today's video then guys, as you can see we have both of the servers here on screen. This is the G4, this is the Intel, and this is my Mac Pro, one of my Mac Pro displays. So everything is working fantastically. I haven't put the G4 to any kind of use yet, but I will uh, very soon and expect a server shelf update and an update on the whole project as a whole, both the servers, expect loads of updates coming um, sometime really soon-ish, but maybe not so soon. Definitely this year, though. I've got loads of big plans. Of course, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you in Monday's video. Thank you very much for watching.